Uh, John Swatland and I'm from God's Way of Love communication team and uh, I've got sitting with me today Peter and Eloisa Lytton Hitchens and they're the co-owners of this property Kyabra in New South Wales and they've got a whole lot of people swarming over it at the moment and uh, maybe you'd like to tell us what that's all about. Yeah how it came about um, probably six or seven months ago um, I was sitting down at our kitchen table with Mary and, and Jesus and um, I said you know, we've, we've just been given this grant, so we were, we're given a government grant to um, plant out um, 10,000 trees. I suggested, I just put the feelers out there, I said, wouldn't it be really cool if we could get a group of people to come in and do the planning and we just have a heap of fun and we get out of some of the seriousness of it. I think a lot of people have this belief that um, it's hard work connecting to God, it's hard work being on the path and for myself there's meant to be joy along the way and um, it's constantly being reminded that the closer we get to our passions and desires the closer we are to God so that's how it came about and, and they said great idea and then I said, um, by the way, let's call it Oktoberfest. You know, obviously Germany has a beer fest in October every year. It's like, <laughs> well, just the, just the concept of having joy in a whole new way. You know, it's like being up on the dance floor a couple of nights ago, just about a dance without alcohol, cigarettes, and all that sort of stuff, and, and get into the pure joy of what yeah. we're doing. So, so that that was the concept to just get a heap of people together to have some real fun and and learn to care for the land in a different way. Uh, we have so many beautiful people who are uh, on uh, with God's way of love that have come here to join with us and share in, in planting and enhancing the local environment, the beautiful property that we are custodians of here. It was identifying how we could connect um, one lot of um, bush scrub land yeah. to, a, to another, so creating a natural uh, corridor. Yeah. And the concept of, with the corridor is, um, is, is having a linkage where the wildlife, and especially the birds, have got a really sheltered, protected waterway mm -hmm. that they can get into and get out of, yeah. but then they've got the grassland either side of it. Yeah. So that, that was the concept because um, I've come from a land care <coughs> phase, mm. it's always been about planting trees quickly and efficiently and fast. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at the land care movement, it's done a lot of really great things. Yeah. But the weakness in the land care movement is it hasn't really been sufficient in helping you know, our wildlife and our birds and that. Yeah. We've run very narrow thing, you know, tree breaks or wind corridors or whatever. Even, even yesterday, when you stand up at the top and you look down the valley and you can see all the swales and all the little trees and all the little life that's yeah. now, you know, I mean, there's life here anyway. Lots of insects and grubs and worms and spiders and, and all that sort of thing, but, you know, we're adding to that equation. Yeah. And when you stand back and imagine what it's going to look like fully matured and then the wildlife that's going to potentially come and live here because of it, yeah. it it's... Um, 
you can feel proud about being a part of it. How does this differ from any other group that wants to, like Landcare, who wants to plant out a whole lot of trees? How does it differ doing it in a God's way of love yeah. way, yeah. in a divine truth way, rather than a, you know, just a bunch the of people? Or... The first thing is that um, in this planting, there's over 150 different species of plants going in. Mm. So with most plantings, we generally have just big high trees that go into a lot of plantings or we put wattles in. Yep. And this planting is about having a complete storage. So you've got little one to two metre plants, you've got your um, two to five metre plants, yep. five to fifteens, and then you've got your, your fifteen pluses up to sixty metre trees going in. Yep. And so you're wanting to create all the different storage for all the different birds, all the different insects and creatures. Yep. Uh, and, and also the size of it, instead of having narrow corridors, we're trying to have some quite big spaces for them and having the water there, which is very important. And having it so that you've got this big linkage, so they've got places they can move. So even the frogs okay. can literally spread to the other end of the property through a corridor. Yeah. And the other difference, up, like I feel, is that um, our intention for the whole of Oktoberfest is we have been a gift to have 10,000 trees planted but our main focus is in the interactions with the people who are here it's about um, it's about being in truth and love and lovingly with with the people that we meet and addressing the issues of love and and saying to someone if they are just angry for whatever reason saying you know it's probably not best you plant that tree you know how about you go off and feel how you feel about that or, or whatever you know um, and just and also connecting with God as much as possible and and, and, the, and each other, like being in a loving space with each other, you know. For myself too, my, one of my personal desires too is that people start to get excited about their passions. Yeah. It's like they can start to see some of our passions. It's like, ask that question, you know, what, what, what really gets me excited, you know? Like so many people ask me, I don't understand passions and desires. What is a passion and desire? It's like, just keep it simple. If you're getting really excited about something, it's highly likely it's really good for you. It's your passion. Yeah. And, uh, just check if it's loving. Just check if it's loving. <laughs> God's loving. God's loving, yeah. But uh, we had another visit from AJ and Mary and they said, guys, this would be really good if we put swales on it. And you'll go out and see these swales. And um, The first, first lot of swales we did, there was this massive projection on it that we, you know, it looked a mess. It looked really, you know, right. and so it was like having to feel through that and go, actually, this just makes so much sense and go with it. It's the going from the intellectual to trusting the process. Because mm. as farmers and coming back from a rural background, mm. we're so used to controlling the environment, whether it's with fertilizers or whether it's with our grazing systems or whether it's waiting for the rain, that we don't have enough rain or we have too much rain. Whereas with this system, it's just trusting the process. And, and that's really made a difference. Yeah, interesting as like, I, I feel a lot more we're focusing on the emotions within us that are affecting things. And even to do with rain, like rainfall is to do obviously with the collective area, but that's an emotional thing as well. Like, you know, we don't feel we've got enough or we do in the last couple of seasons have been pretty amazing. Huh? But, of it. It's just that we, not just doing it as a job or planting a seed and da 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 or putting a plant in. There's so much heart involved in it that it it allows you to connect to stuff about your childhood, mm -hmm. stuff about how you were treated, how you weren't allowed to blossom, and how, you know you've been restricted. And as soon as you tap into any of that, you just you just feel a little bit of you know a little bit of emotion, start crying, but then you feel so much more love for what you're doing mm. like that's why this organization is great mm. so the way that you're doing the planting is important it is yeah yeah definitely um there is there is a, such a thing as best practice whatever you do so we're trying to implement that um with the plants we're putting in uh with we remineralizing the soil which has been depleted uh, a little bit of organic fertilizer with the trees and uh, some beautiful mulch here, some loosened hay that we're using to mulch the trees and I reckon you could soak it in orange juice and eat it for breakfast, it's that nice, you know, so <laughs> it's lovely. So yeah, it just feels what we're doing is really probably world's best practice, you know, I would say, as far as regening and planting trees.
So we're not trying to complicate the tree planting. Yeah. We've, we've got four buckets, yeah. which is four different size trees. Yeah. They're all mixed up in different species within the buckets. Yeah. And then we're allowing the team leaders to really connect with where they feel that each tree should yeah. go. Yeah. And so from our point of view, that just brings the trust in, like, you know, and, you know. There's, there's also another difference of just going within. It's, it's there's a, um, the way that it's um, been set up is there's a real emphasis on service as well. So it's not just everyone sort of, I've got to plant 500 trees today, you know, and then I'm going to get paid. However, like everyone's volunteering their time. Everyone, as you say, has a desire for, for whatever reason to be here. And there's those who are planting and then there's those who are serving the planters. And in doing so, it seems, I don't know, it sort of feels like there's an ability, like everything's there for them, you know, like so they don't, they're not having to sort of slog their way through. And it's like they're tired, they just take a little break or whatever. You know, we always, we always demand something of God. We always want something from God. Usually God's love or God's forgiveness or... In the last five days, I've been able to give to God and love God and love the process. And that to me is being of service, you know. I don't know how else to be of service. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I did, but then the last five days has shown me what it really is. And that's been really awesome. And I, about 10 years ago, I've started an agricultural science degree and um, I had learned about what, what agriculture is all about and really felt that there's so much pillaging and raping of the land and I really felt right then that I just wanted to do everything that I could to reverse the damage that's already been done and this is the first time 10 years later that I actually get to do it hands on and put my hands in the soil instead of doing the sciencey stuff I get to actually be part of the whole the, the grassroots. For myself, it's creating God's garden. For the last 150 years, this land's been constantly taken from. It's been used, and very much from a financial point of view. So there's never really been care of just how the land feels or taking from it all the time. Well, basically we're just um, regenerating an area that's been poorly treated. We're just coming in and just planting a large variety of trees to regen. And I think everyone, for myself, it's just, it's like loving the land. Every time I plant a tree, it's like loving the land one square metre at a time. And everyone has a similar experience, I believe, and it just feels really, really lovely, you know, to, to be putting back into the land. We as the, the community then go and use that land. We never put anything back. So we go to a national park, we want to go and camp there, we want to go and fish. We're always taking from it. So, so even the places that we deem to be beautiful and pristine are getting constantly taken from. And, and with the concept here of connecting it to God and how would God's garden look, it's about putting it back into it. So is it like how we are when we're on the land, even if we go to a place like a national park, it's how we are as we walk through it and as we're planting, it's how we are as we're planting. That's right. And, and, and if you, if you, if you Take, take food onto a national park where you take it all, all your rubbish with you. You know, you, you're careful of how you, you walk in amongst the environment. And but it is, I feel also like even with the planting of a tree, if you're angry, your tree often suffers pretty badly. Um, and if you're just loving that, like it, they totally reflect the emotion that you are, like even house plants do. You know, mine were dead and one of them's like resurrected itself and I was quite surprised. But you know, it, and, and we've even had like frost die out this year, like really, really affect quite a lot of the um, natives that we've planted. And they're all reshooting from the bases. And it, I feel like a lot of that will be who planted it and all of those kind of things. Yeah. And we're just starting to notice things like that more, aren't we? We have a huge effect. And, and that's been, been the really interesting thing is that our law of attraction creates, a, is, part of that law of attraction is the environment we live in. 
So the environment we live in is telling us how we think and feel yeah. and what we believe about ourselves and what we believe about God. Yeah. And if we, if we sort of you know, think about where we all live, it's yeah. like it's a pure reflection of ourselves. As soon as you take that minute to, to think about, okay, how did this place look 300 years ago? And then also think in another way, how can we improve upon this place from what it looked at 300 years ago? And that's when it's understanding that we, we as the um, land carers here have a huge responsibility because it's a reflection of us, of how the land actually looks. So we, are you hoping for some sort of change in the land? or? Um, most people can feel it already, like even after we've just planted some of the land, you know, people are noticing that it feels different. What was the turning point when you were doing traditional farming, you had been doing traditional farming, it's been in your family for many, many years, and how did it change, how did it turn to, to what you're doing now? What was the, t can you remember the actual time? Well, I remember when I first met my wife. I used to think I was very much an alternative farmer back then. <laughs> and she used to just laugh and say, you're not an alternative farmer, you're just a modern traditional farmer. Yeah. And so I think I've always felt that I, we did things differently, yeah. but in reality, we didn't. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of so the turning point, point blank, is, is, is when we finally opened up to um, Mary and Yeshua and, and said, well, actually, these guys, what they've got to say, yeah. it just well, it just makes so much sense, what, and, what, what and, and it feels so right for us. You know, um, every time we started listening to DVDs initially, and mm. I'd be in the shearing shed with my iPod on, just li listening to Jesus all day, and it's like you know, I'd come home at night just all excited, and you know, it's like, man, this is just so brilliant, and it's like, well, then it comes to a stage well. Yeah, it's nice if it's brilliant and it's really good, but we actually need to do something about this. And for ourselves, like we've got three young kids and we see just all the things happening with us as a family and then as a couple with each other, you know, we used to think we were in truth with each other. And we're in reality, we avoided the truth at just about every level we could. And so, I think that was the turning point as far as with the property and with the family. Yes. Yeah, I think I think actually it was the turning point was sort of between us, like the more we heard and then, then it sort of manifested in the land, like we sort of went like, okay, this is happening to us and then we'd have questions about the land and every time that um, Jesus and Mary came down here, we'd mm -hmm. go and see something or whatever and show them how great we were, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> quite arrogantly and, and it's like, Nah, don't think so, eh? And then he'd give us some insights into, into what we could do. And it started off kind of small. Like, there's some things he suggested when we first met him and we took no notice and we still haven't. Mm. And we're only now going, yeah, we need to do that. Mm. And then there's other things that we went, yeah, great, we can do that. And we're really excited about doing. And, and they're very to do with our emotional blocks. Mm. Like, you know, some things we're just like, yeah, okay, we hear what you say, we think we're better than that. And what we're realising is we're not. Like, they, Mary and AJ just know, they've just got a bigger picture and they see more and feel more than we do at this time. Yeah. You know, and, and probably ever will, really. I mean, you know, at some point we'll get there, but I just feel like they're amazing. But I think for myself too, I was tired in doing yeah. what we've been doing for such a long time. And it's like, just got this whole new excitement about the process and about actually what we can do. You know, this whole concept, of the property in the future for us is is for us to get it into a space where we don't need to have one dollar worth of income coming out of this property for our survival and in the way we live because at the moment the property provides everything so even with tree fest october fest it's the dollars and the revenue that's come from the sheep and the cattle who have provided the mulch and provide the hay and then the government grants so in the future, I would really love to have it in a space where we're not taking anything from the property. Yeah. We've all been having a, a very beautiful week in um, being able to give love back to the land, to be able to plant, I think, around 5,000 trees and to uh, engage with one another with um, emotional 
injuries <laughs> probably to the fore at different times so that we are able to address some of our own uh, addictions and some of our um, injuries that we perhaps are certainly more, made more available to us here with so many people. So that's been just so rewarding. Yeah. So the land where we're planting now, over this week, is going back to God. So from a property point of view, there won't be livestock going back into that land. It's going back to the wildlife, back to back to God, and um, back to creating a whole new way. 